Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends. And today uh, we will talk about the Holy Prophet. You know the Holy Prophet was so holy. I mean, come on, you cannot stop. You cannot stop the light of Allah. Actually, you cannot stop the light of the Prophet. I mean, the Holy Prophet was holy to the point when he was born, according to Muslims, according to Muhammad's story. His mother, she saw a light coming from her vagina. And that light went all the way to the palaces of Damascus. True story. Now, not to mention that nobody noticed that light, even the neighbors of Muhammad. Not to mention that looked like Muhammad, his, his mother, she was do, giving birth to him in the field, not in the house. I mean, how the light went out of the house. <laughs> and went in a straight direction to Damascus. I mean, what he had to do with Damascus? He did not even, the light did not go even to Jerusalem. Uh, so the Muslims, you know, obviously, and Muhammad, I don't know if Muhammad is the one, according to the stories, Muhammad is the one who mentioned this, that this his mother told him, which is very weird. I mean, Muhammad, he'd been taken from his mother right away because his family, they don't want him. Obviously, he was born four years after his father's death and his family reject to be their child. Uh, but Muhammad, he mentioned this story and the Muslim believe it. You know, when we ask Muslims about the moon being split, they say uh, the reason nobody saw that from around the world because it happened for a second. Uh huh. For a second. I mean, come on, how you can see it? And maybe it happened locally, you never know. <laughs> So when the prophet, his you know he his mother she gave birth to him. Uh, the light went all the way. Uh, in some story says even went to Iraq, you know, to Basra in Iraq, and went all the way uh, to Damascus in Syria. And here I ask uh, myself a very simple question: The light is coming from the vagina of the mother of Muhammad. Isn't it, this is a great sign that Muhammad is a prophet of God? The first nuclear explosion come to this earth, it was through the prophet Muhammad and his mother, private part. Uh, I was trying to find you an English website. Actually, I found some English website, uh, but uh, it's not the ones I'm looking for. So let me try to do this because I need to use Google Translation to put for you on the screen. All right, I will put it for you on the screen now so you can see with me. This is islamweb.net and this is the fatwa number. You see the number here? This is in Arabic, but don't worry, we will switch to Google Translation so you will be able to read with me. The title in Arabic says The proof or the evidence or the, let us say, uh, what make us believe that Muhammad is a prophet. And the first thing of it is his birth. What What is unique about his birth? So there is a question here saying, I want to know if this is true and what is the proof? And he quote the following, that when Amina, the daughter of Wahab, uh, you know, she get a bread with Muhammad, she said, uh, she used to see a vision every night of one of the messengers and uh, and the, uh, the messenger which means messenger of uh, God telling her about uh, the good news 
of a person she will give birth to him he will be their master okay but here you notice that Muhammad mother she was a disbeliever you see how the story is fabricated obviously Muhammad mother and Muhammad father Muhammad grandfather all the family are disbelievers and when I say disbeliever by the way it doesn't mean they don't believe Allah because remember Allah is a pagan God anyway but according to Islam you have to believe in Allah and Akbar which is they merged them together to be one God Allah and Akbar and that God Allah or Allah which means the moon God he is the one to worship alone if you don't do that you are the believer so the mother of Muhammad was seeing messengers of Allah but she is not a believer so here how the story started broken then then she said uh, when uh, uh, when she gave birth to uh, uh, when she is giving birth to Muhammad a light came from her private part and his mother this is the question by the way this is not the hadith now this is the question of the person uh, he did not even mention the word private part he says from him a light came he did not say what him or from it uh, or sorry when he when she gave birth to him when he is coming out a light came with him and she saw the palaces of Damascus with this light okay when the Prophet was born he's just quoting what Muslims you know keep saying uh, Mecca was surrounded by a bunch of angels by the lead of angel Jibreel and the whole universe was celebrating his birthday okay when Muhammad was born the idols of Mecca they put their head down and they fell down and the bedroom of Kisra collapsed and he mentioned and many many more he say many more uh, miracles and then he continues saying Uh, I mean the question is so long you know I don't know what, what is the answer uh, the answer is here right, let's go to the answer about all of this hmm. so let us uh, use uh, Google translation and go down to the answer The Sheikh who's answering, he says, we did not know any uh, hadith about the one you mentioned in the beginning uh, that she gave uh, birth to their master. So he did not, he cannot confirm that. And then he continue about the hadith about the light coming out from the vagina of the mother of Muhammad. And you notice here, if you read my book actually, Sex and Allah, uh, I think I mentioned that in Deception of Allah too. You will see that uh, the mother of Muhammad, she said, that this is, was the easiest delivery I ever have, and even uh, uh, like as a, as a pregnant woman, you know, as a, as a woman who is giving delivery. But that means that Muhammad, he is not the first baby for this woman. So how come nobody mentioned that? And where is the babies? And where where is the brothers and sisters of Muhammad? Obviously, there is something fishy behind this story because there is no way the mother she would say he was the easiest delivery I did unless she had many delivery. Correct? And then she speak about the light coming from her vagina as you see here. The answer he says, as for the light that came even out even saw his mother uh, 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 please his mother she saw I mean translation is not good uh, about the light coming from her vagina uh, he says it have been proven for it in a vision proven is that how things is proven hmm. so it's a vision so it's not 
something happened for real. Any Muslim there is in the bushes can help us? Is that really a vision? Is that what the story is saying? Or she said, I saw. Because vision is, you know, like see, like a dream, you know, or, you know, like your eyes. Uh, uh, it, it can be a dream, uh, but it's not like something you saw with your own eyes. Vision is something from seeing. The hadith says that she saw. But anyway. So the mother of Muhammad, when she gave birth to him, the light came from her private part. And there is even a person, his name, uh, 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 Al-Arbat ibn Sariya. He said, I saw the light too. <laughs> and not only that. When Muhammad was born, he said something. He, he spoke like Jesus, according to the Quran. He said, I am Abdullah. The book of the seed of the Prophet, this is the translation. So he said what? He said, I am Abdullah. I am the seed of the Prophet. I am from the clay of Adam. And then he continues saying, this is all Muhammad talking now. I'm going to uh, preach and teach uh, the, uh, the teaching of my father Abraham. And I will teach you the good news of Isa, which means Jesus supposedly. And my mother she saw, and the prophet they saw, and the mother of the prophet they saw. And then she continues says, and the mother of Muhammad, when she gave birth to him, she saw a light came out of it, which means her vagina, illuminated, uh, excuse my English if the reading is not correct, you know, the palaces of Syria, likewise, you see the mother of the prophets, blessing of God and people, uh, peace upon them. So here you see, I mean, uh, obviously is a fabricated story because Muhammad for 40 years, he was worshiping idols. If Muhammad, he spoke in his cradle or even his coming out of the vagina of his mother and right away he announces himself as a prophet. So what happened after that? So you notice that Muslims, they made a big frame around Muhammad, trying to frame him as a holy man, as an amazing person. But all of us, we knew that when Muhammad, he met with the so-called angel, he squeezed him three times. Muhammad got scared, he got terrified. So how a person, he is a baby, he knew he's a prophet. Then a man who is 40 years, he do not know he's a prophet. So they frame Muhammad and they make imaginary stories. I don't believe Muhammad, he said that. Even though I know he's a liar, he would say more. But I believe those stories are fabricated long after Muhammad death. However, if Muhammad, he said that, and Muhammad did not say that, that wanted to change the thing. Still was Muhammad is what Muhammad claimed to be and what Muslims claim that Muhammad is. Who is a Muslim is willing to call me? And by the way, if you are a Sheikh, you are more than welcome. We, we prefer Sheikhs over a, a normal Abdul. Do we have any Sheikh? I'm going to turn on my Skype to see if any Muslim is willing to call us. And I have no request from you, my friend, except prove to us that Muhammad was a holy man. Because you Muslim call him holy. So do you call him holy because he is not holy? <coughs> Or you call him holy because he is. I'm uh, logging in my Skype. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we have this kid. Uh, his name is Fatima. He challenged me, but I ran away. <laughs> he challenged me, but I ran away. <laughs> All right. 
Okay. If you are a Muslim and you want to talk to me, you want me to call you, say I'm a Muslim. That just don't uh, just add me. Uh, hey, Alhamdulillah, a Muslim call me when you were free so that you can embrace yourself and seek for the sake. Okay, let me show you what this Abdul is saying to me before we call him. <coughs> Get ready, Abdul. You ask for it. <coughs> oh, this is from yesterday. Maybe he's not online now. Okay. But we will try to call him. I mean, it doesn't hurt. Well, maybe he is not online. Let us uh, see a different Abdul. This Abdul is not online. We have a person, his name is Abdul Wasa, the slave of the wide. Well, Allah is wide, he's very wide. <laughs> Wa alaikum as salam. Kifak. Uh, Rab. Speak to me in English, please, because our channel, as you know, it's in English. Okay, so you want me to prove to you that uh, the Prophet was holy? Yes, go ahead. Can you, uh, he had... can you introduce yourself first, if you don't mind, so people will know who's talking? My name is Abdul Wasa. Abdul Wasa. What Abdul Wasa I mean? It's uh, the slave of the large one. Large one. So Allah is large? Yeah, he's very large. Allah is very large. How large he is? Uh, he's larger than his chair. He's larger than his chair? Yeah. Well, this is not what the Quran says. The Quran says that Allah, uh, you know, uh, uh, if Allah is larger than his chair, how, how he can sit on it? Um, oh, I meant he's smaller than his chair. Oh, he's smaller than his chair. Yeah. So, but as long, but, okay, than, uh, but uh, my friend, look what happened. As long as Allah is a smaller than his chair, and you said you are the slave of the larger, that means you are a slave of the chair, because the larger now is the, is the chair. No, no, there are even larger things. Larger what? Larger things. Yeah, but he, who is the larger now, Allah or the chair? Um, the chair is larger than Allah. Okay, and you are the slave of the larger. Yeah, but the, the larger is Allah. The no, name of Allah. but you just say the chair is larger than Allah, and you are the slave of the larger. Yeah, but larger doesn't only mean dimensions. It means like uh, his uh, mercy is very large too. Ah, okay. He's large and everything. Okay, well, size doesn't matter. I have to uh, have to go with you. Now, go ahead to the topic, Mr. Actually, I, I like this person. He sounds like a nice person, and he is, uh, you know, speaking nicely. So we welcome people like Mr. Uh, Abdul Wasa. Go ahead, Mr. Abdul Wasa. Tell us how Muhammad was holy. Yes, yes. I love you too. Uh, Muhammad, the Prophet, peace be upon him, had many uh, miracles. Like, uh, if you okay. read the Hadith, for instance, Mm -hmm. uh, there was water uh, flowing between his fingers. Okay, so there is water was uh, flowing between his fingers, correct? Yes. Is that authentic hadith? I don't know. So why you mentioned to me something you do not know? Because uh, even the eighth hadith uh, passes. Oh, okay, so now we can, we confirm that even weak hadith pass passes. That's good. But you see, do you think that if somebody said a lie, it's very easy to expose him? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question, please? I mean, if I say to you now that there's water coming from between my toes, you know, okay. I, I, I have two toes, you know, so I put them together and now there's water coming from between them. And you say to me, how you can prove me to be a liar? There's a way to prove a liar to be a liar? Yeah, we need evidence. All right. I have an evidence in the Quran saying, chapter 17, verse number 59, saying that Allah, he refrained from sending any miracles to Muhammad. And this is Quran. 
Allah he refrained from sending miracles yes. to Muhammad and but that's that's dealt by some um, like the early stages of Islam maybe later he sent him miracles what later so Allah he did not he wasn't sure if he would do a miracle or not no first of all he didn't send any miracles but uh, after that he did no he said we refrain yeah, we refrain. It's a past tense. No, yeah, so that's mean he refrained. That's it. He refrained. Allah, he made decision that he will not no, no, give no. my... Okay, hold on. You see, the miracles of Jesus, where we can find them in Islam? Um, the miracles of Jesus... Uh, I, did, I, think, uh, there, I don't think there is any of them in the Quran. Or maybe he talked when he was little in the Quran. Uh -huh. And in the Hadith, there is more stuff. Yeah, no. And all, all of them, they are in the Quran. No, I think some of them are in the hadith too. Uh, okay, can you? Uh, okay, but the Quran mentioned those same miracle, correct? Uh, yeah, some of them, yes. Okay, so how we can how come we cannot find the miracle of Muhammad in the Quran? I mean, Allah He speak about miracles of Isa, uh, Sulaiman. Sulaiman He spoke to the end, as you know. You know, he, 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 Allah He taught him the language of the birds, but that he, 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 he understood the end, and the ants are deaf. <laughs> anyway, so how come all the miracles of everybody, Moses, Noah? I mean, Noah He made an ark, flood came, etc. And all, uh, all, all, all those is mentioned in the Quran. How come this miracle about water coming from between the, the fingers of Muhammad? Is not in the Quran. Well, that's just the way it is. But for example, no, why, but why the way it is? Why? Why Allah forgot to mention that He gave Muhammad such no, no. a miracle? No, no. Huh? No, no. Huh? What? We don't know. Allahu Alam. I know. I know. This is a fabrication happened after Muhammad's death because the Quran never mentioned such a miracle. Because this would be an amazing miracle to mention in the Quran. And uh, as long as Allah He says, don't you Muslim you say if something contradicts the Quran, we refuse it? That's your opinion. I respect it, but I don't. No, no. Uh, this, my, this is not my opinion. This is the opinion of Muslims. They say if something contradicts the Quran, we don't accept it. No, they don't say that. No, they say that. Uh, oh, oh, you know, go go watch uh, Muslims' the debate and Muslims' uh, articles. You will see that. Are you a Muslim Sunni, Mr. Abdul Wasiya? From your name, I think you're a Sunni, correct? Yes. Okay. So, Mr. Abdul Wasiya, when Allah He says we refrain from sending signs, and He said because former generation did not believe in them. Is that really mm. a good reason not to send a sign? No, it's not. Okay, so you think Allah is wrong? No, he is not wrong. I, I said to you that uh, he refrained only in the early stages of Islam, but later he well, sent miracles. Well, this is the time Muhammad he needed. He want believers, you know, miracles happen, so people they can confirm that this person was sent by the one who he claimed he sent him. So if Allah refrained from giving him miracles, then Allah, he don't want to support Muhammad, so people will believe, correct? And then you need to ask yourself, why all the prophets of, of Allah, according to Islam, they have miracles except Muhammad? No, don't say that, my friend, because uh, God uh, has mysterious ways. Your God, Allah, has mysterious ways. Where do you get this from? Uh, it's, a, it's a basic knowledge of any religion. No, like, I, uh, I, 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 think, I think you heard this from, from some Christians, because this is not, you know, the Quran says that uh, uh, Allah, he wrote all the destiny in, his, in a book. This is not a mystery. He wrote it in a tablet, correct? Yeah. Okay. Now, why Allah, he have a tablet, by the way? No, you're switching topics now. Let's go back to... No, no, uh, just because we mention it, because no, it's connected. I will show you how it's connected. Uh, why Allah, he have a tablet? Uh, I don't know. Uh, for the same reason, uh, he gave Moses a tablet. Okay. No, no. Allah have a tablet in his, uh, for his own, no, not not for anyone to read. It's only him. Yeah, yeah because uh, it's uh, the Stone Age. They don't have like uh, iPads and stuff. Oh, so Allah from the Stone Age. Uh huh. Allah from the Stone Age. Okay. But you see, as Allah, He wrote in the tablet the same as we see in the Quran now. Do you understand that, right? Uh, he wrote in the tablet the same. I don't understand what you're saying. Well, isn't it the Quran? This Quran is written in the tablet. Yeah, that's what we believe. Okay. Yes. So Allah He wrote in the tablet, which He is going to read. I refrain from sending sign only because of men of former generation treated them as false. So Allah He is saying 
Well, because they don't believe in them anyway. Why I want to make miracles, correct? Yes. But, but this is a lie. Because the Christians, they believe in all the miracles. We believe in the miracles of Moses. We believe in the miracles of Jesus. We believe in the miracles of all the prophets. So this is was a false excuse. You know, if I say to you, well, like you I, I claim to be a prophet, and I say, well, you know what? My God told me I will not do miracle because you don't believe in it anyway. But in the time Muhammad was alive, there's many people believe in the miracles of the previous prophets. So there was, there was here, there's, a, there's an error. Uh, in, in the writing, I mean, the one who made this verse is, is not a smart. He's large, maybe, as you said, you know, but he's smaller than his chair, and his brain is so small, it's not even a brain of a mosquito, because he, this is not an excuse. This is somebody, he cannot do anything, he cannot prove himself to be a prophet, and then, because he cannot do anything to be a prophet, to, be, to prove himself, he come with this excuse. But he did in the hadith. But this hadith is, is, is not from God. How do you know? Uh, it is from God. Oh, uh, the hate is from God? Okay, uh, guys, our oh. friend here, okay, our friend here, he just said that hadith is from God. Be my witness. It's not me who said that, our friend here. So, uh, 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 I want to uh, show you hadith. And uh, you tell me how this is from God, you know? I'm not picking up my uh, cherries, by the way. You can show me whatever hadith you want. Uh, did your God spoke to Muhammad about farting? About farting? Yes. yes. Okay. How God he speak about farting? Uh, I think fart it's or something like that. Why why farting is so important to Allah? Because it makes you impure. You have to redo your wudu. Okay, guys. So farting will make you impure. Is that correct? Did I hear you correct? Yeah, but I, I feel we're, we're deviating here. We need to go back to the topic uh, question. No, no, this is the topic. Um, Muhammad is holy or not, because if we prove that all of this is, 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 is a silly, stupid, obviously he's no prophet and he's no holy. Now, and you say, you just said, everybody heard you, that if you fart, the reason why Allah, he talked about farting, if you fart, you are impure, correct? Uh, yeah, for prayer, yes. Okay. If if a man, he take a shower with dead dogs, that make him uh, impure too? Uh, no. No. Uh, so how farting. come farting come from inside you will will not will will make you impure, and dead dogs will not make you impure? Well, that's uh, that's how it is. Really? But your yeah. prophet. But, is, but isn't it your prophet? He said that dogs are dirty. Uh, he said uh, we should we should kill black dogs. No, no, this is not a question. Now I'm talking about the black dog are dirty. Uh, the black dogs are uh, are the devil. He said, I think. No, no, no. He did not mention anything about uh, about the black dog this time. I'm talking about dogs are dirty and they are nudges. So if a dog he lick, uh, let us say, uh, lick your dish, yeah, they're, they're... you have you have to wash it certain number of time. You have seven to wash times. it seven times. Correct. So guys, if a dog he lick your dish, you have to wash it seven times, correct, uh, Abdul Wasiya? Abdul Wasiya, yes. Abdul Wasiya, sorry. So, uh, that means the dog is very dirty. He's, uh, he's saliva, yes. Okay. So, how come he's saliva? Huh? So, now we have a dog. Yes. We have a dog. And this dog is, uh, you know, he's dead. You know, he's dead. And this dog is simply his saliva, his belly, his stomach is all over the water. So what we would do? Yes. What we do you think? We will uh, bury it. Huh? We will bury it under uh, under earth. We will what? Bury it. I don't understand. Bury. So far, not you know, the earth. Yeah, but the dog now is swimming, he's dead, and he is with your prophet in the same water. Okay, so? But you just said the saliva of the dog is nudges. Yeah, but uh, if it's, uh, it's a body of water, there, there will be no more saliva. It's going to dilute in the water, basically. It's going to disappear, so it's not the same. I don't understand what the what not the same. If the dog is dirty, the dog is filthy. Okay, is it your prophet? He said, if a dog even walk by, your your prayer is not accepted no more. 
Okay, so thank you. Translate, please, to the people. So your prayer is cut when uh, a dog goes by or when a, <laughs> a donkey. You love this word, donkey. When a donkey goes by and uh -huh. uh, if a woman goes by. And the women. So your prophet, yeah. he made women equal to dogs and donkeys. In a cutting prayer, yes. Uh huh. So if a dog just walked by, he did not even touch you, your prayer is not valid no more, correct? Yes. Okay. That means your prayer will not be accepted if just a dog walked by. So how in the world Muhammad is taking wudu with dead dogs and not only dead dogs? What about women blood from period? Do women blood from period make you impure? Yes. Okay. So how Muhammad is showering with it and he's doing wudu with it? Um, I told you because there's a lot of water and if you put a tiny drops of anything in a big body of water it's gonna disappear okay how about how big the body of the water uh, like uh, three meters cubed okay so guys let us say we have a swimming pool and how high it is uh, two meters the, so if Sorry, the, okay. I, I only know metric units two meters know, okay no problem stuff. so guys if the if the water is three meter wide and two meter high and you put a dead dog there the water will not be affected correct mr abdul wasa yeah okay so but if the water is less that will make the, the 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 body of the water dirty stinky correct yeah all right guys did you hear it okay so, but this is the water is very very little actually it doesn't even reach the private part of muhammad read this hadith with me and this is sahih it says here that this person who is uh, from the Sahaba, he described the water of Bida and he said, I measure it. I measure the breadth of the well of Bida with my sheet, which I stretch over it. Okay, then I measure it with the, the hand. It measure of six cubit in, in the, uh, the breadth. And then uh, uh, they ask me, uh, he opened etc door and said blah 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 and then he says the condition of the water actually here we go hold on. if you go up a little bit it says here read very really carefully where it does reach when its level goes down it says he replied below the private part of the body so when you go down in it how 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 deep it is no it must be like a meter or something no less i mean come on below the private part so Below the private part is your, the water we are talking about. Let us say a meter and let us say you are a very tall person. You are the one who okay, said, well, but... you are the one who said, if the water less than two meters, that will make the water stinky. Um, two meters, but we have weights and heights and depth. Uh, go, give me the other dimensions. Well, it says, uh, uh, I measure six breath of the well of Bida, you know. So it is still very small. You said the three meters, right? Three meter wide. This is like a small swimming pool. This is a jacuzzi. It's a size oh, of a, give a, me the whole it's a size. It's a size of a small. You know the room I am in. It's a three meter, a three meter almost by by uh, two meter and a half. So uh, that's mean your your uh, what you are saying to me. Uh, the dog, the dead dog. And by the way, the hadith does not say a dead dog. It says dead dogs. You see, okay. not only a dead dog, it says dead dogs. If you read with me here, which dead dogs, you know, not one, not two, it have to be three and more. So if we put, yeah, if we put one dog in every one meter, you know, let's say I would go with you with three meters uh, theory. If we put one dog in every one meter and this dead dog, do you think really the water will be clean? No way. Um. But since it is a well, actually wells, uh, the water changes very frequently, so uh, I don't see a problem there. Okay, so you just said if the water is is uh, con uh, contaminated, is good, the water will color will change, correct? No, no, I said that uh, a well like a bitter, yeah. um, there is uh, there is um, there is uh, 
water underneath which comes from underneath the ground no, 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 you know? my friend this is from not a, this, this is not a running water there's no even water there this water is coming from the dirt this is like an old well down in the ground and whatever water from house has come it's like it became a sewage place this is why they are throwing garbage you know that this is you know the, the desert nobody will throw uh, garbage and dead dogs in the water which is not exist everywhere correct I mean, there's no way if you live in Saudi Arabia and you have a will in your backyard or in your town, you go and you throw at dead dogs. People will kill you for doing that, correct? Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's but a well, right? No, but the, the, it used to be a well, obviously. And this is the dirty water. This is why people are throwing garbage. No, it's, what's your proof? Okay, well, the proof is people are throwing garbage. No, you can okay. throw garbage. Uh, in uh, a... Okay, is, uh, was Muhammad living next to the Nile River? There's a river no. there. Okay, how many how many well of water there was in Mecca? I don't know. There's only one. How do you know? You don't Zem -zem? keep talking about uh, Zam 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 Zam. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's the only one. Okay, name for me the other one. I don't know. Okay, so you don't know, so don't tell me there is. So here we have a proof that this is obviously is not a useful water. Otherwise, if it's useful. There's no way no. people who live in the desert they will throw their garbage. And look what happened. Even here it says that the water of the well changed the color. I saw the color on the water of the water in this well had it changed. What does that okay. mean when you see the color of the water is not good? What does that mean? I contaminated. Okay. So you're a prophet jumping in the water, have dead dogs, women blood from period and garbage even it says there clearly your translation it says stinky so in the top of that we confirm that the water color changed which means okay. it's, it's 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 obvious so how muhammad is a holy man and the holy god told him fart will make your prayer accepted dogs will make you dirty Women of blood from menstruation will make your prayer not accepted. This is why they forbid Muslim women from praying when they have menstruation, correct? Yes. Okay, so now we have all of those three together. And yet Muhammad doing ablution, and we have the water color change, and Muhammad doing ablution from that water. What is his holiness? I told you, it's in his miracles. This is a miracle? So if I jump in the sewage now, that makes it a miracle for me. No, I gave you an example of a miracle, which is uh, water coming between his uh, fingers. Will I just show you, you know, if water coming from between his uh, fingers, I mean, he do not know and uh, need to go and jump in such a water. I mean, all what he need just to squeeze his fingers and the water will come like river. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if this happened before or after. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, happened before, happened after. You Muslim, you make a claim. There's no proof of it. So all those in the hadith, if this is a true, if this is a true, then the Quran should mention the miracle as the Quran mentioned every single miracle of Jesus. Jesus in the Quran, he made the blind see. Jesus in the Quran, he made the dead alive. Jesus in the Quran, he healed the lepers. Jesus in the Quran can tell you what you had in your house. Jesus in the Quran, he is born without, without father. So every single miracle of Jesus mentioned in the Quran, how come none of the miracle of Muhammad is mentioned in the Quran? No, no, you're lying. You said that uh, the Quran says that Jesus can tell you what's in your home? Yes, he can tell you what's your home, yeah. Show me the verse. So, okay, but what, why you why you reject what I'm saying? I'm not rejecting, I've never read it. That's, I just want to make sure. But you just said you're lying. Uh, yes, uh, but sorry if I'm why, wrong, why, but, why, but, but, but why, what make you upset when I say Jesus can tell you what you in your home? Is that because only God uh -huh. knows? Only God knows, right? What is the unseen, correct? I'm not upset. I just, I've just never read that in the Quran. No, I'm asking you. Is it true that only God knows the unseen? Um, tough question. No. The Quran uh, says. The Quran I'll says. Say yes. Okay. So, guys, he agree that the Quran says that only Allah know the unseen. Uh, you're changing topics. If you give me first the verse, please, that says that uh, no, I'm not, Jesus I'm not, has... I'm not, uh, I'm not changing topic. Let us go. Here we go. <clears throat> Read with me. 
Uh, just can you read it in Arabic because I don't have YouTube in front of me. No problem. You can open in your side, chapter three, verse number forty-nine. It is وَرَسُولًا إِلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ إِنْ إِنِّي قَدْ جِئْتُكُمْ بِآيَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ إِنِّي أَخْلُقُ لَكُمْ مِنَ الطِّينِ كَهِيَةِ الطَّيْرِ فَأَنْفُخُ فِيهِ فَيَكُونُ الطَّيْرًا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَأَبْرُؤُ الْأَكْمَ وَالْأَبْرَصَ وَأَحْيُو الْمَوْتَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَأَنْبِئُكُمْ بِمَا تَأْكُلُونَ وَمَا تَدْخُلُونَ فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ Okay. Okay. So Jesus, he knew even what you have in your houses and even what you ate before you meet him, correct? Yes. Okay. Was Muhammad able to do any of those? I don't know. No, you know. The Quran answer you. The Quran, if you go, it says here, chapter 6, verse number 50, it says, Allah said to Muhammad, tell them, tell them, hmm, tell them the following. Okay, what he said? You can open the Quran on your side, my friend. I do not say to you that I possess the treasure of Allah, nor do I say I gain the knowledge of the hiding of any uh, of my own, <laughs> nor I do say to you that I am an angel. I only follow what delivered to me, revealed to me. So look what different. The Quran says that Jesus can tell you even what you ate, what is inside your stomach. Jesus okay. can tell you what you are hiding in your closet, in your house. He, he, which okay. means Jesus, he can see you without being there. Muhammad is saying the opposite. Okay, hold on. Let me tell you, you get me wrong. Uh, yes, I'm a prophet, but I know nothing. Except what Allah told me. Okay? So, I, you know, I do not know and see. If I know the future, I will, I will, uh, I will uh, you know, I will take some of it from me. You know? And not only that, Muhammad, he says, will the blind be equal to the one who can see? <laughs> so Muhammad saying, I'm a blind. <laughs> Muhammad saying, I'm a blind. Jesus is not. So how he is holy and he have no miracles. Here we go. They ask him. If they ask him a question, he don't know what to say. He have no idea what to say. So he's a false prophet. But if you go to Jesus, according to the Quran, Jesus can tell you, hey, Jesus, tell me what, you ate, what I ate today. Oh, Christian Prince, you ate nothing yet because you don't take breakfast. Uh -huh. How you know Jesus? Because I'm Jesus. Oh, Muhammad, what I ate today? Uh, Muhammad, he start. Um, okay, hold on. You see, Allah said to me that to tell you that I knew nothing. How come there's a huge difference between here and there? Here, there, we have a person who can raise people from death. He can make the blind see. He can... Uh, feed even the, there's a chapter in the Quran it's called Al Maida, the table. All the chapter is important. The name of the chapter is about Jesus feeding thousands of people. Mm -hmm. But it's in the Quran. But we don't find the miracles which Muslims they claimed about his holiness in the Quran. Obviously, they are fabricated. No, it's not obviously. It's obvious, you know, you, uh, people will be judged in the same time. Do you, uh, Abdul Basir, be honest with me. Do you ever, do you feel like you want to do the same as the prophet? To jump in the water, have dead dogs. Did you ever practice no. such a thing to feel it, to feel how it feel like? No. Why you don't want to do that? Don't you want to follow the step? You said to me you are a Sunni. Yes. Okay, a Sunni mean what? Mean the one who follow the steps of the prophet. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you should follow the step of the prophet. You should, you know, you have a bath in your, in your house, correct? Yeah, but jumping in uh, in dirty water is not sunnah. Well, it's, uh, here we go, guys. Jumping in dirty water is not sunnah. Why? But the prophet, he jumped. I mean, how dirty it can be more than this. There's women of blood from period, dead dogs, and garbage. And the water color changed. And you are I saying know. to me, this is not sunnah? sunnah? What? No, it's not. It's not sunnah. Sunnah is whatever Muhammad he did, so you have to follow the step of the Prophet. Obviously, you are rejecting to follow it because it's disgusting. No, Sunnah is uh, the habits of the Prophet. Exactly. Like, uh, guys, did you hear what do... Mr. Abdul Rasi he said? The habit, well, the habit of your Prophet that, to that, jump, that. the habit of your Prophet to jump in, in a dirty water. This is his no, habit. How many times he did it? Huh? How many times he did it? Well, it says, a yustaqa laka min which means he's something you do always. You know, you, you speak Arabic. Yes. Okay. You, you stuck. It's something happened in the past and happened in the future. So always you do it. 
Okay, can, can you read the whole sentence, please? Oh, oh, we can show you many of them. Hold on, here we go. This is the one we showed you here, but we go, we can go to more hadith. <clears throat> Hmm. Let's read this one first. It says, Abu Sa'id al Khudari said that some people ask Allah Messenger whether it might uh, they might perform ablution out of the will of Bidah, which was which was a will into which uh, uh, menstrual clothes, dead dogs, and stinky things were thrown in. And he replied, water is pure and nothing make it impure. So this is a practice of the Muslims in the time of Muhammad. And Muhammad, he ordered them to do it. Okay. okay. You can do it if you, so why you don't, the... So why you don't want to do it? You just said yourself, you said, I'm not going to jump in a dirty water. Which means, which means, which, which mean, look what you, did, what you did, Mr. Abi Wasiya. When you said, I'm not going I'm to jump to, in the dirty water. You just admitted that Muhammad, he was swimming in dirty water. Yes. Okay, so Muhammad was swimming in dirty water. Is that because he's holy or because he's dirty? Because maybe uh, there is no uh, other alternative. So uh, his wife, she used to jump there too? Probably. Ah, all the Muslims, they jump in this water. Probably, I wish I, had, we don't know. I wish I had a video camera at that time then. So look what you just said, that properly all the Muslims are so clean at that time, to the point they throw dogs in the water, the women, they throw their menstruation blood in the water, and they throw their garbage in the water, and then they jump in the water. I mean, how smart the Muslims at that time? Not very smart. Not very smart, you agree. Because if I'm going to take a shower in it, and I am the one who throw in garbage. Well, I will throw the garbage far away. I mean, the, the desert is empty. Do I have to throw the dead dog in this water? No. Do I have to throw the menstruation rags in that in that uh, well? No. Do I have to throw stinky garbage there? No. So why in the world they want to do such a thing and then jump in it? I don't know, but can we go back to the miracles, please? Okay, but this is a miracle. This, well, this is one of the miracles of Muhammad. He do crazy stuff. Yeah, it's not a miracle. No, miracles is something extraordinary. Yeah, this is extraordinary. You know, look at this. I mean, this is madness. Okay, well, give, give me. No, okay. I can do it myself. You can do it yourself. You know, you cannot. You cannot. Uh, you, uh, make, a make a video. Make a video. Show me yourself that you are jumping in your bathtub and you have a dead dog there and you have a stinky garbage. Don't just throw them there and jump. I mean, wait for like a day or two or three, you know? Mm. Yeah. So okay, give me another miracle. Um, <clears throat> I want something have to connect it with the word holy. What make him holy? Go ahead. Uh, basically, if you do a miracle, then you're holy. It means that God God is by your side. Oh, uh, okay. So, so guys, listen carefully. Okay, listen uh, carefully. Right, if right. you do a miracle. That make you holy. So what? What? Uh, what can be miracle? Something a human being cannot do, right? Yes. Okay. Can a human being throw words in the mouth of Muhammad, making me say for a false Quran? Uh, yeah, you can. You can. Yeah, you can hypnotize any person and make them like uh, turn into a dog or anything you want. Ah, so are you saying you can do what? Say again the word in English. Hypnotize, like uh, hypnotize, hypnotize. I don't know if I'm saying the word hypnotize, correctly. Hypnotize, hypnotize, hypnotize. Okay, so exactly. are you saying that your prophet was hypnotized by shaitan when he throws satanic verses in his mouth? I don't know how it happened, but uh, something like that. Yes, but can we go back to the topic? Yeah, but okay, no, hold on. We are on the topic. We are on the topic. If Muhammad is holy, then the holy Muhammad is protected by Allah. Correct. Uh, not a hundred percent of the time, no, because he, when he went to some jihadi uh, war, he was hurt. So uh, no, no, I'm not talking about physical protection. Now, the word of Allah. Do, do Allah protect His word? The word of Allah. You mean the Quran? Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, Allah He said nobody can exchange the word of Allah. Correct? Yes. Okay, and you just said that Shaitan was able to hypnotize. I don't know what the word. Your prophet, and, yeah, and he controlled him. You know, and your prophet starts saying false words. Yeah. Okay. But uh, he failed. But that's mean but Muhammad. But that's mean Muhammad at that moment he was making miracle for the sake of Shaitan. This miracle by because Quran is a miracle, isn't it? Uh, Quran is a book, not a miracle. Yeah, I don't know. The Muslim they claim it's a miracle. Oh, those are stupid Abduls. Oh, those are stupid Abdul. They are a smart Abdul. Okay. So I will go with you. So are you saying anyone can make Quran? What? Anyone can make Quran? Yeah, yeah, they have like uh, printers. They make a lot of Qurans. No, I'm saying Quran, like a book. It's called Quran. I can make a Quran like this Quran. What do you mean, make a Quran like uh, this Quran? I don't, because I don't you understand. just say that anyone can make Quran. Yeah, you have, you have, you just need a printer and you print it, or you can write it. By, no, no, no. Uh, I'm not talking printing this book here. I'm not talking. I'm saying making a new Quran, new book. It's like, and I, I name it Quran, or 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 make it Quran number two. Can I do that? Is it possible a human being can make yeah. something like the word of Allah? Yeah, you can. You can. But is it the Quran says you cannot? You cannot what? Can you read the verse, please? Okay. <laughs> but we're changing topics again. I don't we know what you're doing. We are trying to see if How Muhammad... Was... No, no, my friend. Uh, uh, we are trying was, to... Did you but, another miracle and you change topics. No, no, I'm not. We are not change topic because the, the Quran suppose, supposedly is the top notch work of Allah, is the book of guidance. And if Muhammad he failed with his Quran, he contradicted his Quran, then Muhammad is not holy and he was a you know a, a person. Uh, he's a scammer. He's the opposite. What is the opposite of a holy person? Is a scammer, a liar, false. You know either he is a true prophet or he is a false prophet. So the Quran says, uh, can you provide, uh, a verse or a chapter like this Quran? Can you? That will be ayat in Mithli, that's it. Uh huh. So, what does that mean? I don't know what it means actually. Uh, okay, well, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what, what you mean. What, what do you bring mean? a verse like it? Nobody can make Quran like this Quran. For it to be ayatim immediately. So bring, bring, bring a chapter like this, if you can. So if nobody can can make a chapter like this, so how the Quran, according to you, he was able to place control on Muhammad, and uh, make him say satanic verses. I don't know. God has mysterious ways. But this is not God. This is Shaitan. Yeah, but Shaitan is controlled by Allah. Oh, so Shaitan, guys, Shaitan was controlled by Allah. And Allah, he made Shaitan control Muhammad. Yes. Okay, why Allah, he does that? I don't know, yeah, I said that he has mysterious ways. Well, what is mysterious about it? I mean, it's not mysterious no more. I mean, uh, yeah, this, is, this, is a pro this is a prophet, this is a prophet, you know. And he is a challenging people to bring Quran like the Quran. Yeah, but uh, I think it makes sense because, uh, for example, let's say you wrote a book called uh, uh, Sex and Allah, okay? Yeah, and, I, this uh, is, yeah, this is my book. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's your book. And you're challenging us to make, to create a book like it. But you've already done it, so we cannot, like we cannot create the same thing and, and say it's ours. You've already done it once, so nobody's going to ever do it again. Okay, thank you very much. So the, the challenge of Allah is a stupid then. It's uh, obvious, I think. Nobody can do like the Quran. It's obvious because already it's done, right? Uh, yeah, but now it's done. The Quran is yeah. finished. Yeah. Same, you give me an example about my book. If I say to you, now make a book like my book, and you do, well, this is my book still. So it's a stupid challenge. Yeah, you can, we can, nobody can make something like it. Nobody can make something like Shakespeare. Nobody can make something. Everybody has their so, own style. So, so you are agreeing that Allah and the one who wrote the Quran is a stupid? No, I didn't say that. 
You're just yeah, the one who said nobody can make the same as the book of the book of Shakespeare. It's already done. Nobody can make the same book as your book, naming my books. It's already done. I agree with you. But now nobody can make the same book as Allah because it's already done. So if I make a book like it, it's, uh, this is already the Quran. And we have it. So, and you said it's, uh, this is stupid. Now, the second I say to you, Quran, then the Quran is stupid, suddenly you say no. No, I don't. I didn't say stupid. I said it's obvious. He's stating the no, obvious. You said, uh, you said it's stupid, my friend. It's recorded. No, no I didn't. It's recorded. Okay. Yes, I didn't say stupid. Okay, people will see later if you say stupid, and maybe they can leave in the comment later if I heard you correctly. So, so let us see here. So, Muhammad is a holy prophet, and the holy prophet is speaking the holy word of Allah. Do we agree on this uh, line? Yes. Okay, but now when shaitan he throw in the mouth of Muhammad, satanic verses, Muhammad is still holy, or he's speaking the word of shaitan? He's still holy, but uh, right. at the same time, speaking the words of Shaitan, which Allah controls. Okay, hey guys, I want I want you I want you to listen to Mr. Abdul Wasi. He is saying, Muhammad is still holy, but for the moment, he is speaking for Shaitan, but Allah is controlling Shaitan. Explain that to the to the people who they are listening, Abdul Wasi, because honestly, I I lost with you. Go ahead, explain to us how this happened. So basically Allah has created everything. Okay. Everything, everything you can imagine. Mm -hmm. yeah, so he also created Satan. So he ordered Satan, like he did with Adam and Eve. He ordered Satan to go say things to them. Mm -hmm. uh, so the same thing happened happened with Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what uh, the lesson was about uh, because I don't know how to explain this. It's just, but the Prophet remained holy actually. That didn't change anything in, in his holiness. Okay. So uh, I don't see a problem there. Okay, so guys, uh, listen carefully. Mr. Abdul Wasa, he said that Allah, he ordered Shaitan to go and fool Muhammad and make him say satanic verses. And then Shaitan, he did the order of Allah. So Shaitan, according to Islam, is a good employee of Allah. He is obedience to Allah. He do good things. And one of the good things is to fabricate Quran. And he is doing yeah. just the order of Allah. Correct, Abdul Wasa? Yes. Okay. So, Shaitan is a Muslim person. He obey Allah. He follow the order of Allah. And his duty is to mislead and to deceive Muhammad. And Muhammad was deceived. Muhammad received satanic verses from Satan. But now, as long as you are the one who said to me that those satanic verses is order from Allah to be said, that means satanic verses is coming from Allah. Correct, Abdul Wasir? Yes. Okay, so Allah is Satan, because the satanic verses, it's called satanic verses because they are coming from Satan. And Allah himself is the one who made those verses, so Allah is Satan. And that means that Allah, he decided to take his satanic verses from the verses who he made anyway. So does that make sense to you? I mean, he is the one who made the satanic verses. And he is the no, one who made the rest of the Quran. So why Allah want to take the satanic verses out of the Quran if both of them coming from Allah? Uh, I don't know. I said I don't know how to explain. By the way, how in Christianity, how do you explain, like, uh, why did God create Satan, first of all? God in Christianity, he created an angel, not Satan. And then he gave a free will for all of us to obey or disobey Satan he decided to disobey and he became this is why he, he got the title of Satan because he is obedience but still he is an angel by nature but became evil person who want to be God as simple as that in Islam no according to you shaitan was a sh shaitan shaitan he's working for Allah and Allah deceived shaitan is that correct uh, Allah deceived Shaitan, yes. Okay. Uh, wait, wait any or something like okay. that. Okay, so guys, Allah he deceived Shaitan, he made him Shaitan. Shaitan is a good person in Islam, he's a good Muslim. Shaitan is he a victim of Allah. Allah he gave him a job. As you see, Allah he sent him to deceive his prophets. Do, do we agree in this, uh, Abdul Wasir? Uh, can you repeat the last sentence, please? As long as you agree that Allah is the one who sent Shaitan to deceive Muhammad to make satanic verses. And he is was obeying Allah. That means Allah he decided to deceive his prophet. Correct? Yes. Why? I don't know. He has mysterious ways. Uh -huh. Well, if you read with me in verse number fifty-three, it says, "So Shaitan, the devil, he will make a trial to those who their heart have disease." But the trial here happened to Muhammad. 
So Muhammad, he have heart, he have a disease in his heart. He's a bad person. Because this trial will not happen to a person who have no disease in his heart. So that he may make what the devil... Can you show it in Arabic, please? I don't like the English translation. No just problem. I understand. Here we go. Or just read that because there is lag. ليجعلوا ما يلقي الشيطان فتنة للذين في قلوبهم مرض والقاسي قلوبهم وإن الظالمين لفي شقاق بعيد. Okay, but that doesn't mean that uh, Satan he uh, only controls those kinds of people. He can control even good people. No, it says clearly only those people who have a disease in their heart. Read it carefully. Don't add things. Uh, don't add things. Is not there. Does it say? To good people does it say anything about good people there no it says unjust people to say people who they have uh, 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 you know extremely uh, uh, quarrelsome you know so there's no good people there so the one who will who will receive those satanic verses is the bad people but the one who receive it is Muhammad no you are saying things which are not in the verse it doesn't say only those kinds of people well does it say there's good people who receive it it says who will receive it read carefully so that they he make that, that what the devil includes a, a trial for the, those he, he he count them those who did he say the good ones and the bad ones no he said those who their heart have a disease and those who have their heart is hardened and those they are unjust the criminals he did not say anything about the good ones you are writing things now so Allah is the real shaitan according to Islam and Muhammad is a satanic prophet no, I don't agree with you. If I really? say I do this, 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 it doesn't mean I do something else. Okay, hold on. Allah has sent Shaitan to deceive Muhammad to make satanic verses. Why Allah decide to take it off? Miracles, please. I'm tired of it. Can we go back to the miracles? We are talking about the miracle. This is a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle that there's a God. <laughs> He's confused. He decided to guide you. By ordering Shaitan to misguide you, how that work for you? I don't know. That's um, a mysterious way to do it. Oh, it's a mysterious understand. way. I like this mysterious way. Okay, so let, sure. so look what happened now. Your prophet is a satanic prophet, and you Muslim, you call him holy. He speak for the devil. He pronounce the word of the devil, claiming that it is coming from Allah, which is supposed to be God. But as you see, he is the devil anyway. And you Muslim, you think he's holy? How that work? He is holy. He has miracles. Okay, guys, he is holy. He has miracles. What is the miracle? Having sex with six years old girl? That's no miracle. That's uh, anybody can do that. Anybody or only perverted ones? Uh, pedophiles. Pedophile. So are you saying Muhammad is a pedophile? Um, I don't know for sure, but uh, he might be. He might be. Ah, that's a good point here. So how you say, so you are calling me to prove that Muhammad is holy and you are saying that Muhammad, he might be a bit of file. Obviously he is. Uh, it's not obvious, no. What do you mean not obvious? He just said he uh, is. His other wives were not, uh, were not uh, premature. If he were a pedophile, he would have had uh, many more more than one uh, child. How we know? How we know? Your prophet, he used... Okay. Do you know the story of uh, of Osama? Osama bin Laden? Yeah, not Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Zayd? What Osama bin Laden? Osama bin Zayd? Let me show you. Do you, know, you don't know the so, story, huh? About Osama that uh, he said if Osama was a girl? <laughs> Have you ever, what do you think if I, if you are visiting a friend of yours and then you see he have a boy and then you touch this boy, supposedly the boy he fell down and you start kissing him and licking him and then you say, if he was a girl, I will dress him up, beautiful clothing until he, she get married. <laughs> Read with me. I will show it to you in Arabic first. Here we go. Go ahead. Nana Abu Bakr. It's Haddathana Abu Bakr. No Abi Shayba. Haddathana Sharik. Ani Abbas. Ani Darih. Ani Bahi. Ani Aisha. Taqalat. Athar Usama tu bi Athabat al Babi. Fashuj fi wajhi. Faqal Rasulullah. Salam. Amiri anhu al Adha. فتقذرته 
فجعل يمص عنه الدم ويمجه عن وجهه ثم قال لو كان أسامة جريسا لحليته وكتبته حتى أنفقه Where's the problem? You want me to translate in my way or? Yeah, he was sucking the blood He was sucking the he was sucking the guy, the boy, and saying, if he was a girl, why in the world he wished he is a girl? And why he is licking his face and sucking him? Uh, he sucked the blood out of him. Actually, this is still done by the Jews when they circumcise the, their children. They suck But the this blood guy out is not circumcised. This is not a circumcised. This is not circumcision. Yeah, he sucked the blood. Yeah, huh? yeah I know. It's, it's the same way. He sucked the blood away. Uh, uh, hold on. Okay. Okay, I will go with you. First, this is not as a child. Suddenly, Muhammad is sucking the blood of a face of a person, and he is wishing that this boy is a girl. Why he is wishing that he is a girl? No, he's not wishing. When he said that, what is the connection between a boy, his name is Osama, which means a lion, to be saying, if Osama were a girl, I would have adorned him. And dressed him until I marry him off. I don't know what he means by that. Maybe the boy was beautiful. I don't know. Oh, exactly, guys. Maybe the boy is beautiful. Thank you very much. So he is a perverted man. <laughs> no. Okay. What do you mean, no? You, it's you who said maybe the, the boy is beautiful. <laughs> so if he is a beautiful, if the boy is a beautiful, Muhammad is sucking, sucking his face and saying, if Os Osama, I mean, the boy is a boy. How in the world and why I am saying if he is a girl? I mean, he's not a girl. What about if he's, he's a boy? What about you say, I will take care of him until he grow and get him married? You know, but he did not say that. He said if he was a girl. What is that? Same time. You see, you're a prophet in the Quran. He promised you boys too. Correct? Uh, our prophet, yeah. Uh, exactly. Why Muhammad is concentrating in the boys who they are very beautiful? Uh, everything is beautiful in, uh, in the heaven. No, no, but now you have boys. Why boys? Why not boys? Everything should be beautiful. Do you like boys? No, uh, you mean uh, if I'm gay? I'm not asking you that. I'm saying, do you like boys? I like everyone. You like boys? Yeah, but not sexually. Oh, not sexually. So why they have to be very handsome and very white and very pretty? Why not? Why not black boys? Yeah, why not black boys? Yeah, I'm asking you why why they are have to be very white. I don't know. Why okay. not? No, there is no black people in heaven of Allah. Uh, what do you mean? Like he is gonna paint everybody white? Exactly. And now because this God and this holy prophet, he's not holy, he's a racist. He like only white people. So every single person in this heaven have to be white. So you mean he hated the Bilal, the, the Mu'addin? Well, no, Bilal, Allah will paint him white, according to Muhammad. No, but you said the Prophet hated black people. Well, obviously, uh, Muhammad, he did. Actually, Muhammad, he said a very clear hadith that black people are created to go to hell. Don't you know that? No, that, no, that can't be. G guys, he is saying this is cannot be. What if I show you the reference where it says it clearly that your prophet says Allah created white people uh, from the right shoulder of Adam and he and they were white like uh, like you know white ants and white, he, ants. white ants yeah that's what he said not me don't laugh respect your prophet my friend and and he said yeah, he's he's laughing he's, guys, so that means that he's gonna go to hell. No, we are coming to you with the story. Okay, hold on. Before we show you the reference, before I show you the reference, if this story is true, and your prophet, he said it, that black people, according to him, they will go to hell. Are you decent enough to leave Islam? Or does it, uh, does it matter for you? Oh, it matters. Of course, everything matters for me. The devil is in the detail. This is what? The devil is in the detail. Okay, but does is that enough for you? 
I, I, I can tell it from your Arabic uh, uh, word reading the Quran that you are from North Africa, which means either you are a Moroccan or from something like that, correct? Close well enough. Uh -huh. So you are an African at the end of the day, even though they consider you as white. So according to Muhammad, the African ones, if they have a dark skin and you don't have a dark skin, those people, they are created to go to hell. So Bilal is going to go to hell according to this. Well, this is what Muhammad is saying. That doesn't make sense. There, it must mean something else. Okay. I think the black uh, is like to symbolize uh, uh, evil doers, like the evil people, and white is to symbolize uh, people who do good. So uh, ah. he can say that. Okay. Guys, did you hear Mr. Uh, 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 Abdul Wasa? He is saying that obviously the black ones, they resemble the evil ones. So if you are black, according to Mr. Abdul Wasa, you are evil. No, one. <laughs> I didn't say that. No, no, you're putting words in my mouth. I this said what, this that is, black, This is what black you said, my friend. This is what you said. Don't tell me you did not say that. No, you, you misunderstood. I said that maybe the hadith means that uh, black symbolizes evil doers, people who do evil, even, even if they're white. Like, I can be white. And I can do something evil, but uh, by saying the hadith uh, might uh, say that uh, I am black because I do evil. You understand or not? Mm. Okay. But if it is saying clearly that black people they are need to go to, he to hell, then you have no excuse, correct? Yeah. Okay. And what that will make Muhammad to you if we show you that? What that it will make him unholy. That will make him unholy. Yes. Wow, that's a good deal for me. I like that, guys. Did you hear Mr. Abdul Wasa saying it clearly? So, if this is a true, that will make Muhammad unholy. Who said that? Mr. Abdul Wasa. Thank you very much. So that will solve the problem between me and you. And uh, let us go and see the hadith. Let me find the hadith. Um. Why is everybody typing one? In the chat. I don't know. Is it right? Okay. I'm just trying to find the reference, uh, the Islamic link, you know, to, to give it to you. And put it for you in the screen and you can read it for us. Give me a second. Masihi Shah. One means yes, no, focus with me, focus with me, forget about people in the chat now. I have Russian people in the chat. Okay, no. Hi. focus Everybody with me, focus with me, Russian. focus with me, focus with me. Here we go. This is the hadith in the front. With you. My friend, this is the hadith in the front of you. I want you to read it. Is it clear or not clear? Allah's Messenger PBUH said, Allah created Adam when he had to create him. Oh yeah, I know this one. Uh, he struck his right shoulder and emitted white offspring as they were white ants. He struck his left shoulder and there emitted from it the black offspring as if they were charcoal. He then said to those who had been emitted from the right shoulder, for paradise and I don't mind. Uh, then he said, "Those uh, for the left shoulder, they are for hell and I don't mind." 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So, okay. Uh, yeah, so I told you, there. it must mean that, uh, like, black is something who does evil, somebody who does evil. You see, a second ago I asked you, if this hadith is true, that's mean Muhammad is unholy. Look how you, 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 you did bite your tongue and take back what you just said. It doesn't say here that those who they are doing black the, the evil. It says here that Allah created the white people from the right shoulder of Adam. And he described their color, how, how white they are. And this is that's mean from the beginning of their birth, from the beginning of their beginning. This is not after they commit sin or before they commit sin. They are white people who will go to heaven, and they are created from the right hand of shoulder of Adam. That's mean they are the right people. And the black people, according to your prophet, they are created from the left shoulder, which is always symbolic for the left, wrong. So the black people are born wrong. And the white people are born right, according to your prophet, and according to Allah, because the one who said that is Allah. So Allah, he said to his messenger, that when he created Adam, he created two kinds of people. One kind will go to heaven, and one kind will go to hell. The one kind will go to heaven is the white. The one kind will go to hell is a black. Now you wanna you wanna play with it? Doesn't look good for you, Mr. Abdul Wasab. Be honest. I told you it's a metaphor. Well, I'll, okay, prove it to me, guys. It's a metaphor. Where is the metaphor there? Because it, it can't be. Because the the closest person to the Prophet peace be upon him is Bilal. He was a black person. No, he, he, he was he was not the closest person. He was his slave, and he was abused all his life. He ordered him to go and do the adhan because he would not order the white people to wake up early morning, lose their voice screaming. He ordered him to walk with him wherever he go to collect donation, for he is a slave, not because he have a freedom to walk around. If Muhammad was a good man and he is, this guy is close to him, we'll free him and take him as a friend. But he was always his master and he was a slave. So don't think he was close to him. Yes, actually, close. actually even good. your prophet, he made fun of him. He says, obey your master. He made Bilal because he's an African. He has a, a strong body. That's why he have them. They bought him because he's a strong man. He is a big man, African man. So they bought him. And they promised him to be to be freed in the future. But they never. And then Abu Bakr, when Muhammad he died, uh, Bilal, he went to Abu Bakr. He says, if you bought me for the sake of Allah, will you free me for the sake of Allah? If you bought me for yourself, then keep me for yourself. Stop being a hypocrite, which means. So Muhammad was not a good person to be led, otherwise he will free him. No. Why he didn't okay, why, why he did not free why he did not free him? Um he didn't ask for it. Maybe oh, he was the guy did not like, ask for it, guys. The slave don't ask for it. You know, he don't like to be free. <laughs> he liked to be slave. <laughs> okay, okay, listen, 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 listen. Uh, uh, I, I want you to focus with me. Does it say? emitted from it white offspring does it say that yes it does okay. say that so it is offspring of this person who the first white person came from the right shoulder of adam it's offspring what is the metaphor about it they are white white is a symbol for something good and black is something okay. Well, guys okay uh, the white is a symbol of a uh, uh, of good and black is simple of bad of bad I will go with you. I will go with you. How you can solve this now in the Quran? Then sure. did Allah He said that Allah will make all the non-believers with faces black? Yeah. So that means if I am already black, uh, He's not going to be able to paint me. Yeah, He will keep you black. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Abdul Wazir. I like, I love it. So, guys, if I am black, Allah cannot repaint me again. That's a good one. You got as weird, man. So, chapter three, verse one hundred six says, "Yom tabiyadu wuju, wa taswadu wuju." The day of resurrection, that some faces will be white and some faces will be black. You see here, the translation says shiny. That's a lie. It says white, white. If you change the translator, you will see how the word white appear right away. They lie in their translation. It is the hobby of Muslims when they translate. They cannot be decent in any translation. Read. We just change the translator. Look what happened. 
and, uh, and the day, on the day when some faces will be light between two bracket light up white and some faces will be a, a gloom of black okay why yeah, Allah, okay hold on is that a metaphor or this is they will be black for real uh, uh so I think I don't know. I don't know, but again, it's the same thing. It's a metaphor. White is my is friend. You are talking to Christian Prince. All the laundry of your prophet is in my head. Let us go and get Muhammad busted. Not you. I feel sorry for you. So if okay. I show you that this is not metaphor, what you will do? Just to give you more proofs, what you will do? You will I'm be honest. Leave Islam. Huh? I'm gonna leave Islam. You promise? A promise of a man? Yeah, I'm a man. Guys, I'm a son of a man. Guys, Abdul Wasi, he made a promise. If I prove to him that this is not a metaphor, that Allah will make people literally black and literally white, he will leave Islam and he made a promise. And he said, he is a man, he keep his promise. I trust that on you, my friend. You sound like a man for me. Let us go and see it. If we go to the Quran, chapter 82, the chapter of the end, uh, and sorry, chapter 27, verse number 82 in the Quran. And then we go and see there's a there's a there's an uh, beast is going to call. Okay, Ajassasa, you know Ajassasa story, right? Yes. Okay. So either what al qawlu alayhim. Hmm? What will happen? Do you know the story of the Jassasa? Alright. Alright. So guys. According to the Quran, chapter 27, verse number 82, there's a beast will come from the ground, and this beast is doing the work of Allah. Mm -hmm. uh, Abdul Wasi, what this beast will do? Do you know? I don't remember exactly. Um, Let me help you. No problem. I don't know. No, pro tell no, people, no problem. Uh, no problem. Let me let me help you, my friend. I'm here to help you. But it's not the Jassasa, I think. The Jassasa is another story. It's in the no, hadith. This is, no, this is a Jassasa. Okay. Yeah, there's a there's a hate about the Jassasa as a woman, right? Yeah, she's very hairy. Yeah, but, uh, but, but Muhammad is very confused. But anyway, so let us go. Uh, Very hairy. And by the way, even that hairy woman, she's black too. <laughs> even yeah. the daughter of Allah is black too. <laughs> Allah, a prophet, he sent Khabib Warid to kill a woman. She have dark skin. She have a very dark hair, and she's African. You see how the evil of Muhammad is all over. Now let's go and read together. This is Tafsir Ibn Kathir. You see the screen? Uh, yes. Okay. Remember, this is not me saying, and this is all is coming from your prophet at the end of the day, because those Muslims, they have no authority to say, except what they learn no, from your prophet. This is, Ibn Kathir. this is not my prophet. No problem, but Ibn Kathir is saying what the Sahaba of Muhammad, according to Muhammad said. So read with me carefully, read, read, me, read with me carefully, please. There will be, so uh, this uh, Jassasa, or this uh, beast, uh, uh, will have a very funny description. It says, its head like the head of a bull, its eyes like the eyes of a pig, its ears like the ears of an elephant, its horns like the uh, horns of a stage, a stag, a snake like the neck of an ostrich, its chest like the chest of a lion. I mean, the whole zoo. Allah, he put the whole zoo in mixer and he made this beast. And then he sent it to us. And now, this is not our problem for now. Then he says here, it will bring out with it the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon. There will be no believer left without making a white spot on his face, which will spread until his face is shining white as a result. And there will be no disbeliever left without making a black spot on his face which will spread until his face is black as a result. And then when okay. people, they trade with one another in the marketplace, they will say, oh, believer, oh, this believer, how they know each other, white and black. Remember, you are the one who said, if this is not a metaphorical, you will leave Islam. 
Uh, f first of all, I said that white symbolizes. Um, what I meant is uh, like the white people coming from the right shoulder, the white symbolizes good, okay? And black symbolizes uh, bad. But there is actually no contradiction between this and that. So it could be as well physical, like uh, not a metaphor. But still, the white is like uh, a symbol for but something. You say, I say you said you are a man, and I said I trust that you are a man. Is that really what it says in front of you? Does it say? No, that this one, this one says it's physical. Al-Jassasa, yeah. my friend, Al-Jassasa al 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 will hit them in their face with the, st with the, with the ring of Solomon and the staff of, of uh, 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 so, uh, yeah, the ring of Solomon and the staff of Moses. And the result of that, it will leave a white spot on the Muslim face. And that will make him white. And will do the same for the one who disbelieve. And that end will make him black. And now you keep saying there's no contradiction and this is the same. Yeah, and second of all, this is not the, the Prophet's uh, work. So it's uh, as aware. Who is Take it? care. Take care. I have, you see, I don't respect liars. I'm not going to waste my time. If this is not your Prophet words, why it is there? You see how they are ashamed of their Prophet. He is unholy. This is not a talk of a holy man. We show them the Hadith saying, from the offspring of the black man which is coming from the left shoulder they will go to hell he said this metaphor we show them that even allah will send the beast he will hit the face of a disbeliever and he will make him black still he is saying this metaphor you are not a man you are not a man you say it, if I can show you that, you will leave Islam. And this is the word of the Messenger of Allah, not the words of Ibn Kathir. Read carefully. So she will hit the beast the nose of Sulaiman with the staff. It's your prophet saying that. See the cowardness? So see how they regret what they say? So Muhammad, child molester, he agree. He's a bit of fire, he don't know. Muhammad, he jumped with dirty dogs. They are dead. Stinky water. Women menstruation. Muhammad, he go after his own son, wife. When the husband is not there, he flirt with her. Muhammad, he made a rule that if he see a woman, her husband must leave her so the Prophet can if her. And this person, he claimed to be a decent man. He promised if I show him, he will leave Islam. Now, you are the one who is watching. I don't know if you are a Christian or a Muslim. Be honest. Is that a metaphor? Is that really a metaphor? When we say, they say to you, Christian Prince, he hang up on people. There's no point of continue talking to a, to a liar. I'm just wasting my time. The conversation is ended. There's no nothing here. It's about hitting his face. Hitting his face. That metaphor. Making white spot in his face. Is that metaphor? Muhammad is even make it more clear. He says his nose. Is that metaphor? How in the world, this person, he keeps saying to me, this is metaphor. I will call him one more time. Because people, they are asking for it. But you lost my respect, Mr. Abdul -Wazir.
Why are you hang up? Because you are lying to me. <coughs> Sorry. I you told said, you this is not the prophet the, word. This is not the prophet. I, okay, no, this is the prophet word. Here we go. Read with me. It says that the messenger of Allah, he said. There is a lag, wait. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So is that metaphor? Will... Is that a metaphor? The so animal said, is, is, okay. is the animal a metaphor? Is the staff of Musa a metaphor? Is the ring of Solomon a metaphor? Is hitting the nose of the Kafir a metaphor? Is hitting the nose, the, 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 uh, hitting the, the, uh, the believer is a metaphor? Okay. Hmm. So this is the prophet's word. Where does it say here that uh, there, there are going to be black or white spots? Well, this is how they recognize each other. The Quran says, my friend, Tabiyaddu Wuju, what is what do we do? Muhammad was explaining oh. the verse. I'm talking about this hadith, don't jump. Yeah, this is the hadith right. about that verse. The Quran says, Tabiyaddu Wuju, what is what do we do? So uh, faces will be black, faces will be white. Okay? Muhammad saying that there's an animal who come from the ground, having the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon, and will hit the nose of the kafir. Okay, where does it say black or white? In the Quran. Well, in the Quran, I told you it's uh, it could be physical, like no, it cannot be. Could, no, it cannot be. Could be because your prophet explaining the verse. He do not need to repeat to make it black and white. Already he is mentioning the verse, and now he is explaining the verse, saying that there's a beast will come from the ground, and that beast will have the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon, and is going to hit the nose of the kafir by the staff of Moses. You, the one who said to me that this is metaphorical about the verse in the Quran, correct? Uh, it could be both actually don't, don't tell be... me both don't tell me both now you switch you said in the beginning it is metaphorical and you said to me if it's not metaphorical you leave Islam here we go your prophet is explaining the verse your prophet is explaining the verse why this hadith is mentioned here why it is here because here is the explanation of the verse and who is the one is explaining the hadith it's your prophet Explain the verse, you mean, but uh, how do you know this? This hadith, uh, how like the this is Ibn Kathir, right? Mm -hmm. And Ibn Kathir took this hadith and put it under this verse. Mm -hmm. How how did he find the relationship between this hadith and the verse? Because this is what happened. Because you Muslims, don't you have books of history where it says when the Prophet he said that, he explained that? Because you see, this hadith here is not really what happened only. The hadith is way longer, but they are quoting for you from the whole story. This, because this is the one, this is the part which explained those sentences that faces will be white and faces will turn black. So your prophet, he is the one who is saying that. And he is saying in the judgment day, there's a beast will come and this beast is going to make you black or white. How? Physically, by hitting you by the staff of Musa as if you are a kafir in your nose and by hitting you with the ring of Solomon in your skin if you are a believer. The result of that, you turn very, very white. Right. Hmm. So what is your problem with this uh, verse? I, I don't understand. It, it's a proof that it is physical. Here we go. You see, even the translation here says, you see, maybe you don't know good Arabic, right? It says, حَتَّى يَجْتَمِعُ النَّاسُ عَلَى الْخُوَانِ يُعْرَفُ الْمُؤْمِنُ مِنَ الْكَافِرِ So what will happen? It says, what to jelly? You said to me, what is the word white? Here we go. What does khiwan mean? What to jelly mean is going to make him shiny white. Okay. Okay, so he said that it's going to make you shiny white. So it's going to make you shiny white. And this is how people, they describe themselves or they recognize each other. So the, a black person, they will say to him, oh, this believer, a, a white person, oh, a believer. Okay, where is the problem? You said if this is literally, you will leave Islam. No, no, I said that white represents good things. And black Take care. <laughs> I certified you as a potato and you are not a man. <clears throat> you are a certified potato.
and you are not a man. You made a promise, everybody heard you. If this is really not metaphorical, you will leave Islam. Actually, you already left Islam. Because you made a promise in front of everybody, and supposed to Allah's God is watching. If this is a true, you will leave Islam, you are out. Because this is true. But you are trying to deny it.